hear me? Yeah, I didn't know uh, such a, you know, having such a stage fright. <laughs> and I used to stand right here playing guitar and, you know, sing with the team that I never had that. But over here, just like walking 10 feet away and uh, it's having that. But I, I did preach before. Um, it's about uh, 25 to 30 years ago uh, when I was attending the... Um, at a uh, Baptist seminary in Madagascar, and uh, uh, during the summer, I was assigned to a few churches and shared the word of God with uh, with them. And um, accidentally, um, my pastor, who uh, sponsored me for my mentor, spiritual mentor, then uh, he, uh, he graduated from the Toronto Baptist. Uh, uh, in Toronto, seminary in Toronto. And uh, I, I think he didn't believe I would stand right here in Canada uh, preaching to you uh, uh, today. And uh, I even forgot to introduce myself, you know, such with this uh, stage fright. Uh, my name is Harry, and I'm a volunteer here at the Bromley Baptist Church. Uh, I'm a volunteer with the uh, wonderful uh, team of worshipers uh, up here. I'm playing guitar and singing also background, uh, in the background. Uh, and today I'm uh, volunteered by Pastor Rob uh, to be uh, sharing the uh, word of God with you. In fact, uh, about a few uh, weeks back, we had this uh, training, this workshop that was announced here. Uh, if people want to attend the uh, uh, workshop to preach, how to preach. So I was there, and then this is the result. Uh, if it goes well, uh, we give credit to Pastor Rob for his great training. Uh, if it doesn't go that well, then uh, it's on me. Uh, before uh, uh, we start, uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to you for this uh, Sunday morning. Thank you for all your... Uh, Grace, for, thank you for all the blessings that you uh, bestowed upon us. Uh, thank you for you don't let us down. You are there uh, with us, and uh, you don't keep silent to us. You still have uh, something to tell us. And that is this moment that we are facing today. I ask you, Lord, to bless your word. Bless uh, my lips to only share what you uh, want to uh, say to us today. And be with us, Lord. Um, open our eyes to see the spiritual gifts and spiritual nurture that we need in our uh, everyday life. And speak, O oh Lord, for your servant is listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Back in uh, the country where I grew up, we had, uh, I mean, in, in that country, we have a definition and expectation of what's called a wedding. And if you are missing anything about what they expect for a wedding, then that's not a wedding according to their standard. And uh, one of those expectations is uh, food. Um, if you make a wedding, the church and the ceremony, everything is great, but the food is bad, then it's not a wedding according to people. And for the food, there's a particular uh, thing about the food as well. Because in our culture, there are like three um, courses for the food. There is what we call the entree, or the first course. Uh, and that is very specific. It's, um, you know, vegetables uh, that cut into Macedon, that's what they call it. And then put some mayonnaise on it. And you uh, eat it with a slice of bread. That's the entree. That's what they call it. And the main course is um, uh, rice and mountain, white mountain of rice, big, big one with a side dish next to it. And the side dish could be uh, any type of meat, you know, like turkey, pork, beef, anything, even uh, uh, seafood you can see there. And the last one is the kind of dessert, that's what we call it, but um, 
uh, eat any, anything that you can, you know, like sweet. And must, there must be, there must be a cake. If those three are not there, they, it's not a wedding, um, according to that culture. And uh, people are trying to do their best so that those three will be together and see, seen on that uh, wedding. And um, it's such a pressure for people, for young people, that they want to make sure the food is there. Otherwise, um, you're going to be the talk of the, the city, of the village. If you're having your wedding and uh, something goes wrong with the food, we're talking about mayonnaise, and mayonnaise we're talking here is not uh, the, um, the mayonnaise we bought from grocery here, but uh, they make mayonnaise, the egg and the... Uh, and the uh, oil themselves. And sometimes they, they do it with bad eggs and people get sick and, oh, your wedding is going to be worst <laughs> if that <laughs> happened. Uh, and so it's such a pressure for people to have the, the, the food right um, in your wedding. So uh, some young people, they don't even, they delay their, their wedding because they don't have enough time to make the food, or they borrow money, you know, from everywhere for that, only for that, that day. Uh, and if your, your food is bad, then people don't give you, we have also in, in that culture, uh, what we call a blessing. So it's, it's money you put in an envelope, and at the end of the, the ceremony or the food, they hand it to you, and this is a blessing for your household from now on. That's the, the meaning of it. And so if your food is bad, then um, uh, they put less money, or they don't even put anything in there. And this really happened in my wedding. It's about 20 years ago. Uh, some people just put, like, the smallest, the smallest bill, you know, um, maybe if, he, if it's with the currency here, maybe not even one cent. Uh, that's what they put. But only few, like a, maybe two or three did that. But we are so happy the rest of them, they give, give a bunch of uh, uh, money. But my, my concern then was, uh, I, what did I do wrong with the food? Is there something they didn't like or, or something like that? But that's what happened. Um, we had some money, money, a lot of money from other people, so we used that for a honeymoon uh, vacation afterwards. But uh, that's the pressure you have. And people are trying to, to really work hard uh, to meet those requirements, what people expect of a wedding. Otherwise, it's going to be a very bad embarrassment. You're going to be, people will talk about it, and people will say, we're not going to bless you. We're going to just give you a little more, or even just give you an envelope, blank envelope to uh, your, your wedding. And, and that is the story that I would like to, uh, you to see today. Um, I have a picture of uh, something that happened a um, long time ago uh, in Canada. It's the wedding in Canada. Somebody was trying to draw what they th thought about uh, a wedding in Canada. But there was a big problem with this w wedding. Uh, there was something missing. They didn't uh, meet the expectation. Let's uh, 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 read our Bible in John. John chapter 2. Okay? And we will uh, read from the uh, verse 1 to 4. In Jesus' name. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to them, they have no more wine. So there was this wedding in Cana where people have uh, their expectation to, to be uh, at the wedding. And one of the expectations in their culture is wine. If you go without wine, then maybe... Uh, it's going to be the same thing as what happened nowadays, um, like, like in my culture. You, it's going to be embarrassment. It's going to be a big issue to uh, your wedding. And uh, here, what happened in, the, in this story, uh, there were more no wine. Uh, there was no, no more wine in the, 
in the wedding. We were, we we're not trying to understand like why it happened. There was some speculation of that. Um, maybe, uh, maybe the price of things, maybe the, the inflation was there, I don't know. Uh, or the price of goods um, were getting bad. Or there was a speculation of uh, the, there were more uh, guests among the, uh, the people attending the, the ceremony. Uh, it was said that Jesus and his uh, disciples were there. In fact, um, as we saw last week, there were like five more uh, disciples who had joined uh, Jesus. And Jesus was invited in this uh, wedding. And he came with uh, his uh, new disciples. So that could be the, the reason of uh, this problem of not having enough wine. Uh, whatever it is, the, the reason... Um, the problem is there. The issue is there. It's going to be embarrassment because there's no more wine. And what we're going to look at today is um, what uh, Mary did, or it says here the, the mother of Jesus did. Uh, when she and mother of Jesus is part of the, the host, we've already um, uh, gone through this, uh, this story before. But they were part of the host. That's why it's maybe uh, family affairs. It's something amongst the, the, the family. And they were there. So when that happens, let's see what uh, Mary did. In verse 3, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. She came to Jesus when there was no more wine. But it's important to note that um, what Mary was referring to. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed that it is, this, this uh, uh, story is called the first miracle of Jesus. So prior to this, there was no miracle. There was no indication of uh, Jesus performing anything extraordinary. But uh, Mary, she has this reaction to come to Jesus. And we are trying to understand why. Why did Mary act like this? She was a little rebuked afterwards, but let's see that. Mary, if you know, um, she's the mother of Jesus. And uh, many things happen. She has some special knowledge about Jesus. She has got a very special relationship with Jesus that is attending the wedding right now. Um, when she uh, bore him in, in her womb, um, the angel Gabriel appeared to her. I don't think all pregnant ladies here have been, you know, any angels showing up to you uh, doing on dreams or at night, but that's what happened to Mary. And the angel Gabriel talked great thing about this baby to be born. He's like the prince of peace. He's, the, he's God. And during that time also, there was another miracle that happened because uh, uh, Elizabeth, who's like a fam family relative to, to Mary and to, to, to Jesus, uh, was very old, but uh, gave birth to John the Baptist. We talked about John the Baptist uh, um, last week as well. But that happened. All those miracles happened. Let's uh, look at our how Luke described what happened for Mary to understand what's going on. Uh, let's see Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, the angel went to her, to Mary, and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. My, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at this word and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You'll conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. So even the naming of uh, her son was suggested, was ordered by the angel, by God. 
And then to start with, she was pregnant uh, by the, uh, the Holy Spirit. Those are all Mary knows at this time. And there are more things that you, we've just celebrated Christmas about uh, um, Mary experienced. Um, when Jesus was born, you know the story about the shepherd. They came from the field, come and glorify Jesus, come to the, uh, uh, the place where he was born. And you also know the story about um, the wise men, the magi. Um, they came and bowed down in front of Jesus. So all these things, if you are a mother, if that something happened to you, then you something special uh, to you. But that's what um, the mother of Jesus, Mary, uh, thought. And so when um, this problem about not having enough wine came up, her reaction, her reflex is to go and talk to Jesus. Because she knew that this Jesus, the son of her, can do something. He's God. And so she came to, to him for this uh, problem. And um, that's, I guess, uh, that's our first uh, lesson today. Uh, if there's anything to, to take about this, is uh, that, um, as you see it on the, on the screen, um, you can take what you know about Jesus and apply it into any aspect of your life. Mary knew about uh, Jesus being God, and she used that to uh, bring her problem, her issues right here. I, I would like to, to point out that uh, in the book of John, John uh, purposely didn't, didn't mention the name of Mary. Did you see that? Because he wanted to emphasize the relationship between Mary and Jesus. If you see the whole uh, chapter, it says um, Mary, not, not Mary, I'm sorry, uh, the mother of Jesus. It's very important. We're talking about the relationship between the, the two, between Jesus and, the, uh, and the, his mother. So for us, I don't know um, if you have anything, uh, if you know anything about God, about Jesus, you can apply that in your life. You may know um, God is love. If you have any problem with loving, you can apply that into your life. If you're in uh, trouble with relationship with someone, God can reconcile you with that person. Whatever you know about God, you can apply that in your life. And in this story, it doesn't have to be uh, very spiritual, like, like relationship with someone or any spiritual problem. Or it could be something very, very mundane, like what happened here is it's, it's, a, it's a wine, it's a wedding. That's uh, her problem. But she knows that Jesus is God, and God can intervene in this situation in problem of wine right here. So you can use that knowledge about God in your life, in any aspect um, of your life. Um, the, what comes after that is the, our uh, calls to know more about Jesus. Because if you want to use what you know about God or about, about Jesus, then you are called, we are called, to know him better. And I would like to encourage each and every one of you to go that way because we are called to not only be saved, to not only have in our uh, name written in the book of life or have a ticket to heaven, but we are called to get to know him better so that we can apply that in our uh, uh, life. So uh, strive to get to know him better Let's uh, look at, uh, at John, John chapter 17, verse 3. 
It's Jesus' prayer for the Christian, for his disciple. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. God really wants us to, to know him better, and that's eternal life. Eternal life doesn't, not only um, something that happens in the future in when we're going to heaven, where we are called to join him, but eternal life is for us to start right here, to know him better. The next question is, um, how do we know him better? We can know him better through a sermon like this, through Bible studies, through our elders, through pastors, through the internet, through anything, through attending the churches. That's how we uh, get to know Jesus better, so that we can apply what we know in our uh, everyday life. Uh, if we are going to continue uh, our, our story, then um, we can see uh, in verse, let's see, verse 2 to 9, let's um, continue. Verse 5, excuse me, verse 5 to 9. Um, his mother said to, to the servant, do whatever he tells you. Uh, nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servant, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now, now uh, draw some out and take Take it to the master to the banquet. Um, they did so, and the master of the banquet uh, tasted the water, and that had been turned to uh, wine. He did not realize um, where that came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, "Everything all? Yeah, I think we start with. Uh, uh, we stop at the verse nine. So." Um, here we are, we are talking about the, the real thing happened. When Jesus come to, came to, when, when the mother of Jesus came to, to Jesus about the problem, he intervened and took care of the, the issue. And here it is shown her belief was right. Her knowledge about, uh, God, about Jesus is right. He turned the water into wine. He proved that he can have command, have authority over things, over matter. And water changed into wine. Um, the Bible didn't uh, talk about something like this happening in, before. It's the first time that they changed water uh, into wine. So the real, real uh, miracle happened right here. But let's see how did the miracle happen. You see that um, Jesus ordered or instructed the servants to do something a little weird. He used the jars that they were found. Um, we're not going to go through all of the meaning of those, but uh, he used the servants to fill up the water. And then the water was served and became wine. Don't you think that Jesus couldn't have um, uh, done something differently? He has, we talk about he had the authority to uh, over the matter. So he can say something and it will exist out of nothing. He was able to do that. He would have said, um, so, oh, you have no more wine. So there will be wine, and all the cups are filled with wine. Jesus can't do that. I've seen the movie of, um, you know, um, Jesus of Nazareth. I think that's the movie where uh, during the feeding of uh, the 5,000, I think there was like prayer, and then everybody got the, 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 the food. Um, something like that, you know, God is able, Jesus is able to make that happen, to pull that off and say, 
all the, the all your cups will be filled with wine. But no, that's that's not what he did. He asked the servant to do something. Which, if you were in the place of servant, like what is he doing? This this person is like out of his uh, his mind or something. But they uh, obeyed uh, what Jesus said. And it happened, the miracle happened. Um, if you remember the, uh, another miracle performed by Jesus when he raised Lazarus from the dead. Are you familiar with that story? Yeah. He raised uh, Lazarus from, from the dead and, and he asked some people to unwrap the, the clothes It was um, surrounding uh, Lazarus. But don't you know that he could have just pulled Lazarus from the, from the tomb and then make him stand up right in front of people. But that's not how he did it. He uses some people. He called people to help or to be an instrument to make the miracle happen. And that is our... Uh, lesson today also. Uh, God can use the obedience of people to make uh, things happen. Um, you can see any breakthrough of any situation that you're facing upon your uh, obedience. And that happens only when we obey His word. And uh, I don't know how, what's going through um, you know, in your know, life. I don't know what type of intervention um, do you need from God. But if you obey his word, he can, you can get a um, breakthrough through your maybe issues with your relationship, with your work, with your study. Get to know him and obey him and miracle will happen because God has done that before he can still do that let's continue our, our story from verse 9 to, to 10 um, you already read the verse 9 but let's read it again and the master of the banquet tasted the water and that had been turned into wine he did not realize the, where it had came from though the servants who had drawn the water knew Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the, the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best until now. Here, it's just shown that when Jesus performed this miracle, when he did this great thing at this wedding, he just did the best. And that's what we should believe in God. We should believe that God is not the so-so. The average is going to do the best always in our lives. If you trust him that he can intervene in your lives, then he's uh, going to do the best. And he's got uh, the best thing um, stored up for us in our, uh, in our lives. We uh, need to believe in that and that will happen to you. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, in chapter uh, 11. Um, you can see it in what Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the sign through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. That's the story. And this is the summary, if, you, if I may say, say so, of the story. The meaning, the reason of the miracle, at least from the gospel, is to glorify Jesus, to point that he is God. He is sent by God to save the world. That's the, the only reason why um, he performed the miracle. The reason why he performed the miracle is to uh, reveal his glory. 
and also for a disciple to believe in him, to get more, believe, more faith uh, in him. And in our lives, we may um, have something miraculous happen in our lives. The reason of those should be for us to glorify him, to trust him more, to have our faith strengthened. That is the reason of uh, a miracle that happening. It may, it may happen, still happen. Uh, if you believe in your life, the God's intervention. But the reason of that is to glorify God. I have this story about, um, you know, in, in my country, when I came from, uh, the road is not like this nice paved like here in Canada. But the road is, you know, it's a uh, dirt road, it's very bad. Now, in this, this time of the year, it's, 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 it's fall. So a lot of potholes and mud, and and there was this very good driver um, who's uh, going through this bridge, the truck driver, and he's very good. And but he's Christian, and so before he passed uh, that bridge, where the, the mud is very bad, he stopped the, the car and say, "Let's pray." He asked God that. Uh, he I can go through, you know, um, it, will, it will bring me safely to the other side. And then he prayed, and he, he trusted. And then after a prayer, he just turned on the engine and went through the bridge. And when he's about to, like his first wheel was touching the other side, he was saying, don't you know me? I'm the best. I'm the best driver. You know, I'm great. I know I do this. I've done this so many times. I can do this. But then the, 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 the uh, rear wheel got into the, the, the bridge and got stuck. And he says, like, oh, my goodness. Uh, shouldn't have, you know, boasted about this thing. Um, then he came back to prayer asking God to forgive him because... Uh, um, he was, was so boasting about being a good driver, he didn't even realize that he asked. Uh, he asked about uh, um, the, his success to go through this bridge, and he only forget about that. Sometimes we do have that in our lives. You know, we ask, we ask God to intervene and to do something in our lives, and we're so eager. We were on, on our knees, and we bow, and we do everything, but sometimes we forgot that we should glorify him, uh, that he really intervened because we did ask, because we did trust in him. But we should turn back and say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you've helped me through this situation. You've helped me uh, through this uh, mess, if, if it was a mess. And uh, that's what we, we were called for. And here it is said that the, uh, the story was to uh, give, uh, to strengthen the faith of his disciples and disciples uh, had that happening. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to you that uh, you spoke to us on how we um, can uh, trust you. How can we uh, bring our issues or problems to you and you will intervene miraculously in our lives. Um, be with us, Lord, as we go through this uh, week and uh, lead us to uh, strive to get to know you better and we can apply that in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think our uh, uh, service is over. Um, there is some coffee and and uh, drink drinks are out there. And so, God bless you and see you uh, next week. <laughs>